Thank you, Lord. One other observation here about this man. It says, when the man found it, he hid it again. He hid it again. This man could not imagine letting this treasure slip out of his fingers, could he? He wasn't going to just let this thing walk away from him. He wanted to make sure that he gets it. And that's the other idea behind selling everything he had, right? He wanted this thing, and he was willing to pay any price, the biggest price he had to get this thing. Here's the wild thing about, about this for us too, guys. And one of, the, one of the things that struck me so strongly about this, um, you know, some of it, sometimes we'll come to church and we think that by coming to church, you know, that's what's going to please God. Uh, if I read my Bible every day, that's the thing that's going to please God. But you look God in the eyes, He's not pleased by you just coming to church. He's not pleased by you just come, coming and reading your Bible. So you may try to bargain with God. Okay, God, I'll give you all my tithes and offerings. I'll give you all that too. Now are you going to be pleased with me, God? But God's unshakable in this stuff. He's not pleased with just your tithes and offerings. And then you say, okay, Lord, I'm going to give you all my tithes and offerings. I'm going to read the Bible every day. I'm going to pray. I'm going to come to church every week. Every time the doors are open, I don't even let my body be burned up as a martyr, God. Now can I have eternal life? Now do I please you? No. You can see him in his eyes. He, he, he's unshakable. That doesn't please God. That's not the thing that he wants. You see, there's, a, there's something that God wants more than anything. There's something that God desires more than anything. Guys, He's willing to come down from heaven, come to earth, come as a little baby, and be humiliated in many regards. He's willing to shed His blood, be beaten and tortured for this thing. He didn't come and get beaten and tortured so that we'll come and sit in the pew or so we'll crack open the Bible, you know. He didn't come do, the, do all that for nothing. No, there's a treasure that's more valuable to him than anything. He wants your heart. He wants you. He wants you every day of your life. He's your Father in heaven. He wants you. God knows Luke chapter 12 where it says, where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. You see, God's got a treasure. God's the one that owns this field, guys. God's the one that buried this treasure in the field. God's the one that wants you to find that treasure. He doesn't want you to go another day without knowing that treasure. He doesn't want you to go another day without experiencing Him, experiencing His love in a deeper way. Today is an opportunity, guys. An opportunity for you, but it's an opportunity for Him. That's why He wants the Word of God preached. That's why He calls us to preach the Word of God to our friends and our families, to pray for people. He deeply, deeply, deeply values us. And this man in this parable, he deeply valued, once he saw the value of this treasure, he deeply valued it. He says he hid it again. He hid it again so as not to lose it. Guys, when you hear the words of God, you got to cling to them. You got to cling to them. Don't let it escape you. You got to cling to them like a man that's shipwrecked in the middle of the sea. He's going to drown. He's going down, but then he finds a little plank or something to hang on to. How does that man feel about that plank in that moment? You're not going to bribe him out of that plank, are you? I mean, offer him all the diamond mines on the planet. He's not going to let go of that thing. He just holds on to it with everything he's got. Now take that same man, take that same plank on the beach. And you've got a very different scenario. The guy would be sitting by the plank, but he doesn't care about it. It's just sitting over there making no difference in his life at all. He doesn't need it. He doesn't want it. He could care less. But you put that man in the middle of the sea. 
And there's nothing, you, you can look in his eyes and you can see, there's nothing I'm going to do that's going to get that plank out of that man's hand. Guys, that's where we are. You and I, we're in the middle of the sea right now. The waves are big, guys, and it's like we've got this weight tied to us, a 10,000 pound weight that's going to drag us right to the bottom. That weight is our sins. The things that we've done, broken God's laws, rebelled against Him, rebelled against His kingdom. All the, the times when we haven't treasured Him, like this scripture talks about. All of that. By the way, it's not that there's some people that are good and some people that are bad in this world. This, the Bible says it very differently. It's not like, okay, Michael thinks he's good and then all these other people over here are bad. No way. That's not what the scripture says. The scripture says all of us have sinned. All of us have a weight tied to our feet that's going to drag us to the bottom of the ocean. God hates that. God hates that. You don't have enough strength to pull yourself to the top, guys. I don't have enough strength. I can't do it. But praise be to God that Jesus Christ walks on top of the sea Praise be to God that Jesus Christ reaches His hand down to people that are sinking. You don't have to be pulled down by your sin. You just have to reach out and take His hand. we got to do it though, guys. we got to do it. But He's reaching down for you. That's why you're here today. It's not a coincidence that any one of us is here today. God's speaking to us right now. Don't ignore the voice of the Holy Spirit when He speaks to you guys. He wants to reach down. And I know, here's the other thing. Here's the other thing. It's hard for us to reach up for that hand. You see that hand with the nail scars into it? You think, I'm not good enough to even touch that hand. God, that you would reach down for me? That you would die on the cross for me? That you'd come and be raised to life so that I could be raised to life? You are already alive up there, God. You have everything you needed. God, why would you do that? Because God's got a treasure that He's after. And He's willing to pay the price to get it, guys. That's your heart. It's not your time or your money. All those things can reflect your heart, of course. But that's not what He wants. He wants you. He wants to step in. Promises of God, when you lose your father... He's got a promise for you when you lose your father. The kingdom of heaven has a promise for you. He says, I'll be your father. He says, I will be the father to the fatherless. Who is like our God? And when we mess up and when we sin, he's got a promise for us. I'll cover over your sin. I'm not just going to expose you like the rest of the world does. I'm going to buy you and take you into my arms. And make you brand new. The kingdom of heaven. It's like a treasure. Hidden in a field. Have you tasted that treasure? Have you sought out that treasure? He's seeking you out. He wants you. Oh Lord God. There's no one like you. There never has been. There never ever will be. God, thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your strength when we're weak. Thank you for giving us hope when we're hopeless, when everything else around us looks hopeless. God, even if we spit in your face, you don't stop. You still love us. Who's like that, God? You die for your enemies. Who's like that, God? I want to be like that. I want to be like you and that, God, and all those things. Lord, you are a treasure. I pray that you open up our hearts and minds to see that, to know that, to trust you in that, to seek you, God, while you may be found. And I pray that some here that may not even know you, God, and may not even know you like that, to know you as their Father, that they would trust you today and they'd become brand new creatures because of what you've done. 
Dear God, thank you. We praise you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, our King. Amen.